All right, so step one, insulating the garage. The first thing you wanna do is pick the hottest day that you can possibly get of the year because that's a, seemingly when you're gonna figure out that you need to do this. Uh, the other thing that you need to do is make sure you've got some of the materials on hand. We're gonna to go to the store. We're gonna pick up most of the stuff that we need right now. But uh, one thing you do wanna have is a pretty large tarp. You can gather everything, put it in the middle, tarp it all over. That way you have access to the sidewalls. So we're gonna to need to drill holes in the sidewalls plug a tube down there, fill it up with insulation. We're also gonna go up in the attic and we're gonna fill that in. I'm gonna show you some of the prep work that I'm gonna do. Also, I'm gonna give you guys some of the reasons why I'm doing this. It's hot, uh, the heat load uh, is definitely increasing and also the heat load that I'm adding is increasing. So we're gonna take a look at what these uninsulated walls in this garage in Central Texas look like as far as temperature. And I'm gonna give you the outside measurements, the inside measurements. All right, let's get started. So if you're in your attic and you see that you've got decking and a bunch of crap in there, you need to clear that all out and you need to pry up the decking. So this is usually going to be a total pain in the ass. And uh, you see I have radiant barrier here. We'll take some measurements of that also while we're up there. So it's definitely a pain in the ass. Just get all the stuff down from there. Go ahead, pitch everything out. Make sure that you gather all the stuff that you can out from there. Move it towards the center or just remove it from the entire garage area for right now. All right, so we're in the attic. We're going to take a look at a couple of readings here. So the first reading that we're going to do is we're going to shoot over here. And we can see that we're at 116, 129, 133, 134. Now, this is the cool thing about radiant barrier. If you can see that, we're at about 109. And so if you've ever thought about doing radiant barrier in your attic, go ahead and do that before you blow in anything. And so here's some of the AM temperatures on the wall that's exposed here that we're going to be blowing insulation into. We can see 130s, 120s, down to 102. And this is at 9 AM. So we can see that the outside sheathing is at 89.4 here. And that really is pretty hot and it's gonna get a lot hotter. And you can see that the wall on the inside is actually 88.3 already. So this is just radiating into the interior. Head to one of your local stores, go to the pro desk. This is not the front entrance usually, this is the side lumber entrance. There's gonna be a pro desk there. For renting the insulation machine, you need to actually go ahead and talk to them. They'll tell you if they've got the parts on hand. You should get there early, especially if you're on a hot day in Texas because these things will rent out pretty quick. All of the good machines in Austin are rented out as of yesterday. We're gonna give it a try today. All right, today they do have it. They've got the hose, they've got the parts there, which they were missing the other day and they got the machine here. Yeah, and if they've got one of these type of machines, this is actually a really good one. This is for fiberglass insulation, uh, and this is available in Orange Corning or the John Manning, and it'll feed these bags in, third of a bag at a time, pretty easy. So if you can get this one. 10 bags of insulation is gonna give you a free 24 hour rental. That's more than enough time. I'll load this on up into one of those dollies. And we found that 10 bags fit perfectly, but we actually ended up going back and getting an additional 20 bags so that we could get a discount. If you are cutting these into thirds, you will not run into jamming problems. However, we did run into jamming problems when we had them cut in half. So it's good to just pre-cut them all into thirds, stage them all right by the blower so the person can feed them in easily. You're also going to need to have your phone and some Bluetooth headphones on for both people. If you find that you don't have all the pieces that you need to adapt the hose to the machine, go ahead, use a lot of uh, painter's tape, possibly some uh, electric tape. Everything rolling, just keep a nice back and forth motion. Make sure you get a coverage uh, that is adequate towards the edges. You don't wanna leave a huge gap between the edges. And also make sure that you've put up your rulers so that you know how deep you're going. And if you're like us, you decide, hey, we might as well go ahead and do the entire attic and just blow up uh, the R60 everywhere. That way we've got ourselves a much more energy efficient attic. This is kind of a pain in the butt to get it all set up, so you might as well do it all at once. It's been a very hot day, but at the end of this day, we now have R60 insulation throughout the entire house. And I mean, this is a lot, a lot of insulation here. I did not think we were going to do this. Uh... You know, once we got the machine, it just seemed like, why not? Because we had already gone through ugh, just a ton of stuff getting it set up and everything. I want to show you guys a couple of things really quick that made this just so much easier. This is a Milwaukee saw that you can get for just drywall hole sawing. You can use a hole saw, a big giant one, but this is actually really cool because you can use it if you ever want to do recessed lights. It's variable, the size of it, and it 
catches most of the dust so you can dump it into something. These plugs up here were all cut by this. And I've got all the nice plugs here that I should be able to just put a piece of backing uh, wood up there and then I can put them back in and do some mud and tape around them and then just go ahead and do whatever kind of crap that I'm gonna do to try to make them look good again. Uh, this entire wall doesn't look great, so I'm not gonna like lose sleep over this entire wall. But man, I got some vacuuming to do. This is a lot of cleanup that I've got to do here. And this is exactly why you also wanna cover up all of your hardware. It is really working. This is now like really cool to the touch actually. This is really tight. So when it's really tight like that, you'll actually notice a pressure change on the hose tip and it'll slow down a lot. That means it is definitely full and compressed. Now, what you don't want to do is create such a good like seal that you are blowing air and creating a overpressure event inside the cavity because then you'll get this. So I got just one of these and I feel pretty good that I just got one. That is a nail head coming out. And the reason it's coming out is because it got so much pressure from an air event that it just like, boom. And I had that really, really well sealed up there. So you don't want it super duper well sealed. As a matter of fact, you want to take it back just a little bit. I started using this towel and creating just some air gaps around it. And that was allowing it to escape a little bit. This is definitely why you also want to be wearing goggles when you're doing this because it will blow back on you for sure and your head is in the vicinity. Uh, another thing, if you do have an AC and you are leaving it running, if you put some fabric softeners in front of it, these are really good air filters. I wouldn't run this like this most of the time, but this is a pretty beefy unit so it can really move a lot of air here and it's not going to have a problem for the next 30 minutes doing this. The temperature inside here right now, let's see here. 79.5. Oh man, that is awesome. That is just awesome. The temperature on the wall over there, 77. Temperature on the floor, 80. Wow. So this is just so much more energy efficient as a result. Oh yeah, and I left that open. As a result of all the insulation work that I've done, I mean, I've got so much cleaning up to do. Do know you're just going to actually be filthy no matter what happens. If you're in a really hot environment, there's a good chance that you're not going to wear a bandana, long shirts, long sleeves, and also jeans in the attic in 140 degrees. So keep in mind, take a cooler shower. Don't take a really hot shower. Just take a, you know, lukewarm shower or kind of cold shower. And that will help get all of the fiberglass insulation off you. So hopefully we get some really great sound reduction. Uh, not that we actually have a ton of sound, except for the servers. Uh, hopefully we also get some really good uh, energy efficiency out of this. All of the uh, can lights that I had put in are IC rated, so that's insulation uh, contact. So they're good for being buried in insulation. Wow, I mean, there's cold air rushing up from down here. It is so cold in the garage right now. Absolutely awesome. This is gonna be wonderful for the surfers. See you guys next time. You can hit me up at Ghost Spaceport on Twitter, website, digitalspaceport.com. Make sure you hit like and subscribe while you're down there.